All right, we are sitting here um, on the first day of shooting with uh, Nancy Arts Hart. Just getting, yeah, yeah, just uh, getting a little bit of research in and discussing what we're going to talk about later on today. So, uh, see you in a little bit. Each one of us seeks out where we feel kinship. I feel really comfortable in nature. I walk here many times a week. Before we met today, you yes. were talking about the importance of this walk to your practice. I did, I actually wanted this to be part of it, besides being in the studio because I have these little adventures, like a kid playing outside, you know? I think I get charmed and I get, I kind of go back to my child self, yeah. which allows you to work. I get to see all the great dogs too, that's the other thing. Hi, were you in the water? Were you in the water? And my friends who walk with me are always saying, do we have to say hi to every dog? Yes, we do. We do, yes. yeah. <laughs> Would you say that nature is the, the strongest influence on your practice today? Well, I would say that I, I really couldn't survive without it. Now, your recent series, so your painting, your commission. The CS Art Commission was... Yep, it's a called Community Supported Art, and they chose they chose about eight or nine artists local um, to Cambridge to make 50 pieces of work. So I said that I would take um, objects, which I would call still lifes. Like I think the objects. wow, the wind is unbelievable. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, of objects actually, it started off, and I. Uh, would put them in vignettes, and of course the, the work kept moving in its own direction, and it, it wound up being about nature. I think what really sticks out to me is you said that there was moments of deja vu. Yes. So your, your work, your still life came from sometimes photographs, yes. a lot of photographs, yes. then you would go back out and, and I would find them. And you would find that work. Yes, some of the work I did at the residency this summer out in Ohio, um, I was out in the middle of nowhere in cornfields inside this factory that's now a residency called Open Wabi. Okay. And I was painting, I was just letting it rip, listening to Tom Petty. And uh, um, I was painting these, what I later thought looked like bonsai. Okay. And when I came back, one night I was walking in Cambridge in Huron Village, and uh, I saw these bushes that looked exactly like what I was painting. I have photographs of them. I couldn't believe it because I thought I wasn't looking at them. I wasn't thinking about bonsai. I was just sort of making it up. Uh, so I, somehow I work pretty deeply with synchronicity and deja vu and those kind of things. That's what I was looking yes. yes. Okay. We're going to switch. All right. Or do you want to move on out of here? Yeah, why don't we walk back and yeah. I'll take over the camera while you walk back. Yes. So yes, I can tell astrology daily. But it's just one aspect of what I look at. Right. Nature and astrology. There's a bunch of things I think I use that sort of is a backdrop and a base mm -hmm. that sort of grounds me maybe to be able to make work. Right. I mean, you have to have something to like come back to at the end of the day. Yeah. I think that stability is, is really, really important. I think it goes back sometimes, too, to being Celtic. I had a really deep uh, experience the first time I went to England, which was really? in 71, 1971. So underneath the ground in many parts of England is chalk or limestone. And so there are these ancient drawings. They say they're from the Druids. And um, as you're driving through the countryside and there's these big rolling hills, all of a sudden you see the, the outline of this horse in white. And so 20 years later, I made three chalk drawings in three different sculpture parks. It took 20 years for that to gestate. Wow. And I, I made women. There's no women. 
There's men, there's horses, there's chariots, but there's no women. So I made three Druid women. The thing is, I left them to disappear. Oh. So they're all gone. I just have documents of them. I like that you made them so that they would disappear over time. The fact that they were women and there are no women in there reminds me of the sort of disappearance of women throughout our history. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's brilliant. Totally. <laughs> That's, I, I love that story. I'm so glad you that up. Um, so do you think we should stop filming now and yeah. then kind of book it back to the house? Let's book it. I really see painting as a almost a, a ritualistic act, which being a Catholic, lighting candles for people, there's all these rituals that you, you do, and so painting is, is a ritual for me. I think the space that happens when you're painting a picture is almost a prayer. I think it's it's not uh, it's not verbatim. It's not it's hidden. It's the way the space that's created as I'm making the work, and I think I'm drawing from that inside. It's a it's a space within myself, a um, an act, a ritualistic act. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So you consider yourself a painter, but you also make installation work. I do. Um, how important is the space to your work? Um, how does the work change depending on the this, this space or the environment that you find yourself in? I think um, installation is actually creating space. I think hmm. you're, you're creating uh, your own space. You're, you're in control of taking up space. Is that another form of prayer, maybe? Yeah, it is. It's also, it's got this sacred sacredness to it. There's like something happening, and I'm not happy when I, when I decide this is done, mm -hmm. when I make a decision, you know, as I'm entering into something and making it happen. How do you decide, this says what I want it to say? So I, be I believe you told us that the, um, the Spanish painter Anthony Tapias was a big influence for you. Tapias made iconic marks on his canvas, I think similar to graffiti. Um, he, is, uh, he isn't alive anymore, but uh, he was working from the aesthetic of things being um, rough and, um, and maybe uh, after war. Mm -hmm. um, the, the destruction of war. Yeah, and yeah. Buildings being blown up and, and things like that. Um, his work was really political. What is it about the aesthetic of Art Pervera that plays into your work that inspires well, you? Well, what's really interesting, since we've, we've had this discussion, I really think that Art Pervera is, is almost, um, is coming from the Tapier interest uh, because their work is now monumental and um, it's definitely after the destruction of Italy in World War II. And they were just using found objects and um, things that were leftovers and broken things. And they were um, totally uh, working on critiquing the museum because they would set up things that had no monetary value. Only okay. aesthetic. It was making work out of reality and, and um, yeah, scraps of things. Hmm. You know, and putting them in the gallery to look at. Hmm. And raising them up and saying... Let's look at this broken chair, you know, and people are like, what? <laughs> like, before that, it was, you know, in a frame, and it was, you yeah. know, in a museum, yeah. and it was all elevated, and it was all like, oh, my God, you know, or beautiful women, or the muse, or whatever, and then mm -hmm. suddenly it's something broken. It was more about thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I don't really make political work, although I think it's feminist in some ways. Yes. Because it's critiquing the museum and it's using non-monumental materials mm. and it's uh, refusing to frame things in a beautiful frame or even mm. to put them on a stretcher um, or to show them in a way that is um, acceptable as a commodity. I actually am against those things. I actually don't. I'm fighting that all the time. Um, it's interesting that Two works I made, one was called Isola, which is uh, island in um, Italian, and Vert, which is uh, green in French. 
Both of them were um, six feet high, which is my height, <laughs> thereabouts, and uh, probably about my width as well. And they both were uh, on the wall, uh, coming off the wall. Vert had a live grass growing, um, had a live element. I love the idea of something live being um, used or something that was live. Are they, in a way, a self-portrait? Yeah, they're self-portraits, definitely, because I think I used the idea of six feet, and the Druid women in, uh, installations I did were my size, and then mm -hmm. I made ones that were twice my size. I think it's about taking up space and not disappearing, mm -hmm. uh, being silenced, or not seen. Which brings us back to... The yeah. feminist vein that yeah, runs through your definitely, work. Definitely, definitely. Um, it has to do also with power. I think it has to do with power and control. Uh, I'm creating a, a situation where something is going to take up more space or going to grow, and something's going to happen. Hmm. So it goes on. It's something that's happening even after I leave. The potentiality. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. And it's your presence as the artist also, because yeah, yeah. it's your portrait. But I think it has to do with women having power. I think I really do. <laughs> I think it has to do with something's happening, like what's happening here. Right. You know? You're you're but, taking your dimensions and you're putting them in this white yeah, cube into and... into a vehicle. It's a vehicle for an idea. I like the idea of of uh, making something happen that. People say, what is this? 